Hey, how you doing? We are in Proverbs chapter 4, today, verses 20 through 27. Proverbs chapter 4. Let's take a look. What do we got? My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt, corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Now, when I first read this section here, I thought, okay, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, listen to what I say, get yourself some wisdom, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, it's the same thing again. And I thought, well, there's got to be maybe a little bit more in there. So I decided to keep looking at it. Uh, we do have, of course, the continued uh, emphasis on, you know, getting wisdom, pay attention to what I say, you know, don't let my words out of your sight, you know, keep them in your heart, you know, this whole, this continued uh, encouragement to seek after wisdom and understanding and instruction, you know, this is just over and over said. But then there's something here that's a little bit different, which is, you know, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. So, above all else, guard your heart. What does that mean? Um, you know how you can go through life and you're doing the right thing, but you're souring on the inside? You know, you're, you're doing the right thing. You're doing what people want you to do. You're, you're being a good boy or whatever it might be, but you're getting resentful. You're, you're not really believing what's going on. You know, you're not true to yourself. You know, that is that puts you in a place where there's something yucky building in there. So it says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. And sometimes, you know, you have to do the old thing, you know, the stinking thinking, whatever, and you, you have to have thankful thoughts and that sort of a deal. Sometimes you need to reorder your own perception of what's going on. And instead of being selfish and weak, you know, you need to... Uh, care about other people and have some fortitude, you know, and, and walk in thankfulness, count your blessings. Sometimes it's a deal of uh, making sure that your heart is right. Other times you have to realize that, man, you're going down the wrong path. You know, you're, you're not really following what God's leading you to do. And how are you going to keep your heart right in the midst of that? I learned this lesson, uh, you know, as a new Christian, you know, a lot of the environments I was in, if you didn't lie, it wasn't going to work. You know, like the, the system only worked <laughs> when lying was involved. You know, I don't know if you've ever been in scenarios like that, but let's say it's a workplace environment just to make it simple where uh, there's expectations on employees that are actually impossible. And so they have to fake, um, fake the reports in order to satisfy the company because it's impossible to actually do what is expected. Well, you have to lie in that situation or leave that situation. And you know, it might be a situation where then you need to leave it because you've got to guard your heart and you don't want to be somebody who ends up lying and you don't want to get that yuck in your heart where then you, it bleeds over into other areas and you're caught in this sort of corrupt reality. You, you need to get out of that reality then, you know, and all the more so when it comes to, you know, family relationships, spouse, you know, like if, if it's in a yucky thing, you got to fix that. You got to fix the external thing so that you can keep your heart right. Um, so sometimes, again, you got to look into your heart, you know, cultivate thankfulness, th those sorts of things. If it's not an external issue, but if it's an external issue that's kind of souring you, then you need to fix the external issue, go ahead and deal with that while you're dealing with your heart. Um, and then the connection between verse 23 and 24, I think is quite powerful. You know, again, verse 23, above all else, guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Verse 24. So make sure you watch what you say. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. 
So watch what you say. Um, but again, when you tie that in with guarding your heart, don't have a yucky heart and try to say the right thing. Because as, <clears throat> you know, this reminds me of Jesus in uh, Luke 6.45. Let's just hop there real quick. Luke 6.45. What does he have to say about uh, this topic? The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so if we don't get our hearts right in those moments where we're not overriding what we want to say, <laughs> we're going to say the wrong thing. We're going to say something yucky. So you actually have to deal with the root cause, which is where your heart is, which means you need to get out of situations that cause you to be resentful or you need to fix your heart when you're just being resentful because you're selfish or whatever it might be. So we need to deal with our hearts and that allows us then to deal with what we say. So don't just deal with what you say without dealing with your heart. Because out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. So let's pray to truly guard our hearts. You know, this is something I can't see your heart, except maybe some of the, you see the overflow or whatever, you know. I can't necessarily see that. But that's the thing that's going to matter more than anything else. You got a yucky heart, yucky stuff is going to come out of you. Your life is going to turn yucky. Let's not have that. There is a way to find the beauty and the goodness, the purity and the love that life has for us. So, and I mean for real and get it in your heart. So let's guard our hearts. Let's pray to guard our hearts so that we can have the right overflow in our lives. Heavenly Father, help us to really get the right things deep down on the inside. Help us to understand who we are, not be insecure, not be afraid. Help us to understand who you have made us. Lord, help us to understand this is a broken world and that, you know, life isn't fair, but hey, it's going to be okay because you're going to see us through and it's going to be all right. Lord, help us to be thankful for the things that we do have, especially in our culture where we've got more than any people have ever had in history and we're more unhappy than ever. Lord, the answer isn't in the abundance of our possessions or how we measure up against other people, but there is a different answer. And so, Lord, help us to find that, help us to see it, grab hold of it so that our hearts can be in a good place where we can be thankful, where we can be full of peace and joy and love and have all the fruit of the Spirit in our hearts so that then that will overflow from what we say, from what we do, how we understand the world, and there won't be a contradiction between our outward uh, expressions and what we have going on on the inside. So Lord, help us to above all guard our hearts so that we can have the right overflow. Father, bless us in this. In Jesus' name, amen.